Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, in a 10 News exclusive, we talk with George Floyd's uncle about the roller coaster of this week. You cannot treat black folks like we're nothing. We're by far not nothing. The changes he hopes to see moving forward. Plus, health leaders are bringing the COVID-19 vaccine into schools. I'll show you why they're rushing to get students vaccinated. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Lindsay Ward. And I'm McKinley Strother. John has the night off. On June 16th, George Floyd's murderer will learn how long he'll spend in prison. Derek Chauvin was found guilty on all charges he faced. In a story you'll only see on 10 News, we talk with Floyd's uncle who wants America to keep the momentum in delivering justice. He spoke exclusively with 10 News reporter Alexis Davila about what more needs to be done. When the jury read guilty on all three charges against Derek Chauvin, George Floyd's uncle, Selwyn Jones, counted. One down, uh, three more to go. The trial for the other three officers involved in Floyd's death is set to begin in August. Feeling partly defeated, Jones says the recent verdict is not a symbol of justice. It's a moment of accountability. I do like the verdict, but don't put the cart before the horse because something else is coming up. On Thursday, Jones paid his respects to Dante Wright as he was laid to rest in Minneapolis. Tell George Floyd who you are. The same place where his nephew, last May, took his final breath. I'm sad every time I hear another name. But now Jones focuses on passing the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, a bill that aims to ban chokeholds, create a police misconduct registry, and eliminate qualified immunity. He hopes the momentum from the trial will give the bill a push. I don't think there's ever going to be a situation where we're going to have this kind of advantage. So let's take advantage of what we got when we can and see if we can make a better place. However, in late January, the Virginia House struck down a bill to end qualified immunity. Democrats said it would hold officers more accountable, but critics said it would hinder officer recruitment as local departments face officer shortages. Jones hopes police reform will prevail nationally as he says black lives are on the line. I just think that what we got through today will get back tomorrow. So. We'll see. In Roanoke, Alexis Davila, 10 News, working for you. Now, Chauvin faces a max sentence of 30 years in prison, but with no criminal history, he could be looking at about 12 and a half years. The Hill City wants to address diversity, equity, and inclusion by creating a new job. Council voted 4 to 2 this week to consider hiring a strategist. The interim city manager believes Lynchburg could benefit from it. Councilman Chris Feraldi voted against the proposal. He's concerned about the day to day operations of the position and wants to protect First Amendment rights. This position is about uh, helping us develop culture uh, and training and recruitment and uh, building an even more positive organization than we already have. Listen, I believe everyone is made in the image of God and everyone is valued and has intrinsic value. Um, but at the same time, I need to reckon with the Constitution what it says. And I don't want a government official stepping in and dictating to the community what is acceptable and what is not. Feraldi says there are existing organizations not funded by taxpayers that could help the initiative. $100,000 is being allocated in next year's proposed budget for the new position. Early voting for the June primary started today in Virginia, but tomorrow the focus will be on the 7th District. Three Republicans are facing off in a firehouse primary. Sherry Blevins, Lowell Bowman, and Marie March are looking to represent Floyd, Montgomery, and Pulaski counties. Whoever wins the seat will replace Delegate Nick Rush. It's expected that around 1,000 voters will cast a ballot. They'll also sign a loyalty oath to assure they vote for the party's nominee in November. You make your choice about who I want to represent me of the three. They're going to be passing laws for or against you. You must bring identification to vote. For more information, head to our website, WSLS.com.
Switching over to your weather now, it was another chilly day out there, and you, you'll you definitely want to keep that blanket around for tonight. Meteorologist Delaney Warden joins us now. So, Delaney, it won't be quite as cold as last night. Good no. news there. Yes, in fact, we saw some record-breaking cold temperatures this morning in Lynchburg and Danville, both reaching below freezing, breaking their old records, and that is not going to be the case for tonight, so we don't have to worry about that, but it is still going to be a chilly one for us. Now, at the moment, we are still in the 60s at this point in areas like the Roanoke Valley back towards South Side, holding on to the 50s in the New River Valley 57 at Blacksburg here in Roanoke 62 and 49 in Hot Springs. Over the next few hours, if you're planning on heading out this evening, it is going to be a good evening to do so. Our temperatures will be slow to drop as we keep these clouds around by 11 p.m. We're in the lower 50s. I'll have more details on just how cold we get tonight, plus a look at your weekend forecast coming up in a few minutes. McKinley. Delaney, thank you. U.S. health leaders say it is time to resume the use of the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. A CDC advisory panel found out of nearly 18 million people vaccinated, there were 15 cases of blood clots. Three were deadly, but they say the benefit far outweighs the risks. Local leaders say resuming that shot could help with vaccine hesitancy. Health districts like Pennsylvania, Danville, and Southside have had issues with transportation and broadband while distributing the vaccine. The overall demand is is lower. Uh, is it is it lower because there's no J and J right now? To some degree, yes. People have become more selective about which vaccine they want, and many of them want one and done. I misspoke at the beginning of that. I said 18 million. It should be 8 million people. There were 15 cases of blood clots. Spillman says the district will work with the central VDH office to get the amount of doses it would need to vaccinate people within that district. As more vaccines become available, health districts are looking to bring doses into schools. Today, Roanoke County hosted its first clinic at William Byrd High School. That's where 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder is tonight, and she's live. Annie, how do things work out there? Well, McKinley, nearly 100 students got their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine today. The county is making a big push to vaccinate their students before the end of the school year. Now, we weren't actually allowed inside the clinic because a lot of those students who were vaccinated today are minors. The county says Roanoke City and Allegheny Health District reached out to them yesterday, so the plans came together really quick. School leaders say it's a reassuring sign that so many students were eager to sign up on such short notice. I think that says a lot about that the, our students want to be vaccinated. I think also we have some sports, uh, some uh, athletes who uh, participate and they want to make sure they're not quarantined. Now, the Roanoke City and Allegheny Health District says it's currently working with other school divisions in the region to set up clinics at more schools. Roanoke County has a similar clinic set up next Wednesday at Northside High School in Roanoke County. Andy Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. A stroke of success and luck for Rosie's Gaming Emporium. I would say gaming in Virginia is explosive. The big change is coming to its Vinton location and how you can cash in on some big prizes for the two year anniversary. New tonight at six, Virginians are putting up some big bucks for sports betting. State officials say gamblers have wagered more than $628 million since it became legal, and that was just in late January. According to the Bristol Herald Courier, about half of that money was for college and pro basketball. There are six platforms you can use, but the majority of people use FanDuel and DraftKings. Today marks two years that Rosie's has operated here in the Commonwealth. So to celebrate our day, there are special prizes and discounts all day for you to take part in. 25 people will win free play for a year. There's still two drawings left, nine tonight and then another at midnight. In those two years, the Vinton location has thrived. That's why it is undergoing a $28 million expansion that started back in January. And that's going to give us 350 additional games, a live bar and stage area with our expansion, and because of the magnitude of the popularity, 280 spot parking garage. Oh, wow. Construction is expected to be complete by the end of this year. I'm Shane Dwyer. We're live at the 66th annual Vinton Dogwood Festival. They planned for COVID, but the weather may be throwing them a curveball. More details on that coming up next. 
And despite the increasing sunshine this evening, we are tracking that rain for the weekend. Details and the timing coming up in your full forecast. Tonight, the 66th annual Dogwood Festival kicks off in Benton. Yes, it does. A two-day event celebrates community spirit and raises money for local events. And that's where we find 10 News reporter Shane Dwyer live this evening. So, Shane, things are just getting underway. Yeah, Lindsay and McKinley, the band actually just loading in right now and getting ready to set up. But when we pan out to the crowd, you can see a nice group of people already gathering here at the Vinton Farmers Market and the stage here. If you notice people, it's hard to tell from our vantage point, but they're all spread out about six feet apart. The staff went out here with chalk earlier today and drew little bubbles or pods that people have to stay in to make sure that everyone is socially distanced. Now, the festival is the oldest continuous festival in the Roanoke Valley. There's food, crafts, a car show and plenty of of games for the kids, among other things. But tonight, things much smaller because of the pandemic, and the same goes for tomorrow. The annual parade cannot happen, so they did even more decorations around town instead. We're decorating along Washington Avenue and downtown. We're encouraging people, um, residents and businesses, to decorate. Some volunteers have also made decorations. The Joy Seniors from Vent Baptist Church. Now the weather tomorrow will also be an issue with a long day of rain in the forecast. Some of the events will move inside and those will be limited in terms of crowd size, but some of the other stuff will remain outside and that will go on rain or shine. Now back out with us live here again, the band just getting set up. That's supposed to start at 630 and go through the rest of the evening. If you haven't been to Vinton in a while, town leaders here say there's plenty of reason to come check them out and they hope to see you this evening or this weekend. Live in Vinton, Shane Dwyer, 10 News. We're for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. And this evening will be a wonderful time to head out to the festival as we've been seeing some more sunshine moving in, the clouds clearing out. It's not going to be lasting very long, but still a quiet evening for us. Temperatures feeling fairly mild now at 62 here in Roanoke, whereas other areas are starting to cool down just slightly. 63 is our warm spot in Danville and 57 over in Blacksburg. For tonight, our temperatures do drop back down into the 30s and 40s. Not nearly as cold as we were this morning where all of us were in the 30s. In fact, many of us below freezing, but still unseasonably cool for this time of year. If you live west of the parkway, we want to watch out for some patchy frost there. You may still want to cover up your plants tonight if you have um, uncovered them since this morning. Now, our satellite and radar here at home looking very quiet. Uh, despite all of those clouds, things are going to be staying quiet here for the rest of our evening. And then we head back towards the central U.S. Oklahoma, Texas, dealing with some strong storms at this point. In fact, they do have a severe threat at this hour. We'll be watching this very closely, but we're actually going to be pretty lucky. So we're starting the morning off fairly quiet. It really won't be until we head towards, say, lunchtime that our rain chances are really going to start to increase. Temperatures staying very consistent as we go throughout the day because of the rain and the overcast skies. Most of us will be staying in the mid 50s. Now our future tracker shows that this warm front continues to inch closer along with our low pressure system. I've said this that we're going to be on the cooler side of this warm front. That means that our atmosphere is going to be more stable here at home, whereas the further south that you head, especially south of that warm front, they have more unstable air, and that is why the severe threat will be staying to our south. So good news for us. The rain is just going to be light to at times heavier rainfall. Make sure you keep your umbrella handy. Other than that, you don't necessarily need to cancel any of your plans for your Sunday. We'll be holding on to that rain mostly towards the mountains, though, for the highlands in the New River Valley. A lot of us will actually be staying dry, so that's looking good. Good. Rain chances are looking to be highest along and just off towards the east of the parkway, looking at upwards of about an inch by the time this entire system is out of the area. So if you know any of those significant spots that typically flood pretty easily, watch out for that this weekend, but we're not watching out for any major flooding. And then the jet stream goes back up to the north. We talked about this. This is what has brought us our colder air over the past few days. 
Well, now because it's retreating back to the north, it is going to be bringing us warmer air from the Gulf of Mexico. 70s and 80s as we head towards the middle of next week. So quite a roller coaster ride with our temperatures tomorrow. 16 degrees cooler than we should be for this time of year. By Tuesday, Wednesday, even into Thursday, our temperatures will be running more than 10 degrees warmer for this time of year. So we're certainly going to be enjoying that. Your seven day forecast has our temperatures back into the 70s by Monday. A lot of sunshine on the way to 80s stick around Tuesday, Wednesday and even into Thursday. A brief cool down on Friday still going to be unseasonably warm by that point. Happy. All right, Delaney VMI bracing for their first postseason playoff appearance in program history and we'll preview an all region state semifinal as LCA visits Daleville to take on the Lord Botetourt Cavaliers. What both teams are saying next in sports. And then tonight on 10 News at 7, masks have become an everyday part of our lives. But for those vaccinated, you may be able to get rid of them sooner than you think. Where doctors say you can safely unmask right now. That and more when the news continues tonight at 7. Go play a, a really, really good Holston team that's, you know, they're, they got, they're dynamic and, and everything. So, you know, we've got to clean up our mistakes. We, 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 we just made way too many mistakes in the second half, and, and we got to get that cleaned up. Too many penalties and too many fumbles and putting the ball on the ground. we got, we got to clean that up. All right, Regency champ Galax traveling to the Region D champ Holston in Damascus tonight. Class 1 state semi. The 8 and all Maroon Tide have advanced to six straight Class 1 state semifinals. And this is only the second trip for Holston in school history. Meanwhile, Lord Botetourt under coach Jamie Harless is one of our area's most successful programs of late. Four region titles, a pair of state runner-up finishes since 2015. 10 Sports' Brooke Leonard has more on the Cavaliers' next challenge. The Class 3 state semifinals is familiar territory for the Lord Botetourt Cavaliers, but facing Liberty Christian this far into the postseason is not. A really good football team. Um, they execute really well. They got a lot of pieces that... Uh, that most teams don't have. You know, they got tight ends, receivers, they got running backs, quarterbacks, uh, really dynamic. Uh, you know, it's a challenge. I hope it's a really good match. And I think it's going to be like whoever's going to like out tough each other and who's going to be like ha have the will to win. And I think that's going to really affect like, who wins the game and stuff. This is LCA's first time in the state semifinal game since joining the VHSL in 2017. They're undefeated since their opening loss to Brookville this season, and they want to prove they're the real deal. Joking with someone today in, in a meeting, they asked me, give me a little 30 seconds about what you think about Lord Vodetot. And I said, well, have you ever seen the Green Bay Packers play before? I said, they're very similar, you know. Uh, I mean, they're big, physical, and athletic. It's going to be a good game. Uh, Lord Vodetot has a lot of good athletes, a great team. Uh, just like stuff like here, just now what we're going to be doing here. It's this is what's going to take to get through the game on Saturday and hopefully come out with a win. I think it's going to be one of those games that we'll be able to, be able to find out a lot about ourselves. In Roanoke, I'm Brooke Leonard, 10 Sports. And it's SoCon champ VMI at perennial FCS powered JMU in a different Commonwealth clash, if you will. VMI is new to this stage, but they point to their strength of schedule this season as their preparation for the FCS playoffs. You know, we've been underdogs for a few games this season already. We, we, we weren't expected to beat Furman, number 10 team in the, in the nation, first week of the first week of the season, but we did. And... JMU is a good team. There's no doubt about that, but we're good too. And that's the reason why we're in the playoffs as well. So I think we have that mentality that, you know, we are we are toe to toe willing and able to compete with any team we face. And we'll go into that with that mentality on Saturday. Kick set for 2 p.m. from Harrisonburg Saturday afternoon. State finals volleyball tonight at Rustburg and at Auburn. Class one cross country. Trevor, Trevor Tomlin wins the boys race. Perry McClure wins the team title. Morgan Dalton wins the girls race. George with teammates celebrate the girls title. NCAA Division three volleyball going on in Salem. Three little words. One big highlight. Cut it out. We get a look at Lindsay Ward's uh, basement. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's the mock-ups for the new player lounge at Virginia Tech. Coach Justin Fuente on record saying he'd like a Dave and Buster's feel. That is a beautiful room. Yes, it is. I was going to say we have a we have a hokey basement, but it's nothing to your house. like that. Go to Daily News is next. We'll see you at seven.